Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Co-Director at the LA County USC Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. And welcome to Sound Bites. Welcome back to Sound Bites, Ocular Ultrasound Part 2. In this module, we'll further explore ocular ultrasound, building on those concepts introduced in Ocular Ultrasound Module Part 1. We'll learn how to diagnose retinal pathology, specifically retinal detachment. We'll also look at vitreous pathology, a possible mimic of retinal pathology, such as retinal detachment. And we'll learn how to differentiate between the two conditions using the kinetic or movement examination. Now let's take a look at an illustration showing the anatomy of a retinal detachment. We note the anterior structures of the eye, the cornea, anterior chamber, lens, and iris are all normal in this illustration. The pathology exists in the posterior aspect of the eye, in the posterior part of the vitreous body. And we note here that the retina has buckled away from the choroid, both medially and laterally. And this is a very bad thing because the blood supply to the retina exists through the choroid, and the lack of opposition of these two layers will cause ischemia of the retina with time. Now we remember that the retina is a continuation of the optic nerve, thus the retina will always be attached there or tethered down to the optic nerve. The retina is also going to be attached or tethered down anterior and laterally at the aura serrata. And this is important as we start to look at ultrasounds of retinal detachment. Now let's return to our patient's ocular ultrasound, placing the probe in a side-to-side -side or transverse orientation over the affected eye. Right away we note that there's pathology within the posterior aspect of the eye and we can see a hyperechoic or bright structure waving around in the posterior aspect of the eye that should not be there. We'll look at the patient's other eye in the small video to the right and we note here the normal appearance of the retina tacked down to the choroid. So in the affected eye, this is actually a detached retina that's moving around as the patient looks up and down, and we have the probe positioned over the patient's eye. So right away, our diagnosis within immediate orientation of the probe onto the eye is retinal detachment. Here's the ultrasound from another patient who presented with non-traumatic loss of vision, and again, we note the classic appearance of a retinal detachment. We have the probe configured in a side-to-side -side orientation or transverse orientation over the patient's eye with a probe marker oriented lateral. We can see the optic nerve sheath coming up from the posterior aspect into the eye, and we note the detached retina emanating off from the optic nerve. Now recalling that the macula lies just lateral to the optic nerve, we can see here that this detachment has affected the macula that this is classified as a MAC-OFF or MACULAR-OFF retinal detachment. Now let's take a look at a retinal detachment using the kinetic ultrasound examination. We're having the patient look from side to side as we place the probe over the closed eyelid, and we note here a very large posterior detachment of the retina. And we can see here that it has a tethered membrane appearance as the patient looks from side to side. Now we note some anterior vitreous material that swirls around as the patient looks from side to side, but I want you to look towards that posterior aspect of the eyeball, towards that membrane, the tethered membrane, that moves back and forth as the patient looks from side to side, and that is the classic appearance on kinetic exam of a detached retina. Here's another ocular kinetic exam of a retinal detachment, and we can see the tethered membrane appearance of the detached retina moving around as the patient looks from side to side. But we can see that it has a classic V that tethers in at the optic nerve sheath right there. And I'm going to still that image down, and again we can see the optic nerve posteriorly coming up towards the back of the eye, and the detached retina tethered right there to form a V coming anteriorly into the vitreous material. So that's the classic appearance of a retinal detachment on kinetic examination, always tethered at the optic nerve. Here's another video clip showing the kinetic examination detailing a retinal detachment. As the patient looks from side to side, we can see the serpentine motion, the flicker of the retina, which moves around as a tethered membrane in the back portion of the patient's eye. But notice it has the classic appearance that it's tethered there, both posteriorly at the optic nerve and anterior laterally at the aura serrata. So another classic appearance of a retinal detachment on bedside exam. 
Here's a bedside ultrasound examination from another patient who had painless loss of vision. And looking into the back of the eye, we see another classic appearance of a retina detached off the back of the eye. Notice it has a classic membrane type appearance that layers out in the back of the eyeball. Now, as I mentioned in the earlier part of this module, we should always investigate body structures in two planes, and rutley detachments are no exception to that rule. Here we're going to now place the probe in a vertical up and down orientation, and what's interesting is now I have the patient looking down, so I can best see the inferior aspect of the eye, and we know that this retina detachment is mainly an inferior detachment. And we can see here the detached retina coming off as a membrane that tethers in at the optic nerve, which we can see that black area coming into the back of the eye. And we can see the detached membrane is predominantly located inferior to the optic nerve. Now it's important to realize that there are possible mimics of retina detachment both on clinical evaluation and on bedside ultrasonography. Vitreous pathology, such as vitreous hemorrhage and vitreous detachment, can be confused with retinal detachment, and the symptoms can overlap with that of retinal detachment. Patients can have both floaters and vision loss. And while at first glance the ultrasound may confuse the two, there are important concepts with ultrasound in order to discriminate the two conditions one from another. This ultrasound was taken from a patient who experienced multiple floaters within their right eye. And what we see here is the classic appearance on bedside ultrasound of vitreous blood. And we can see the speckles of the vitreous material within the vitreous cavity, the posterior aspect of the eyeball. Now to best visualize vitreous hemorrhage on bedside ultrasound, it's important to realize that we may have to turn the gain up to a high level for optimal visualization of vitreous hemorrhage. But again, we see the classic appearance, those little speckles of vitreous blood within the vitreous body. This ultrasound was taken from another patient with painless loss of vision. And again, looking into the vitreous body, we see vitreous material present within the posterior aspect of the eye. This is the classic appearance of vitreous detachment. All that vitreous material has accumulated there within the posterior aspect of the eye, leading to vision loss and prominent speckles or floaters as the patient looked from side to side. Because vitreous pathology can be confused with retinal detachment, it's really crucial to employ the kinetic examination as an aid to best diagnose retinal detachment versus vitreous pathology. In this clip, we see vitreous material that's congealed within the back of the eye, and notice as the patient looks from side to side, it tumbles around there within the posterior aspect, the vitreous cavity of the eyeball. And here again, we'll see the patient looking from side to side more rapidly, and notice the classic tumbling motion of the vitreous material within the back of the eye. Now this is to be differentiated from a retinal detachment as the retina will have more of a tethered membrane appearance as it's going to be attached within the back of the eye at the optic nerve and anterior laterally at the aura serrata. Vitreous material will tumble like clothes within a dryer as it's not attached within the posterior aspect of the eye, very different than a retinal detachment. Now that we understand more about vitreous hemorrhage and vitreous detachment in comparison to retinal detachment, let's take a look at this video clip from a patient who presented with painless loss of vision. Note the huge amount of vitreous material that's accumulated within the vitreous body, the posterior aspect of the eye, and notice that it tumbles around as the patient looks from side to side. So this was a huge amount of vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous material that accumulated within the back of the eye of this patient who was a diabetic, and notice the classic closed dryer tumbling motion of this vitreous material. Just to reinforce the difference on bedside ultrasound from a retinal detachment, in the small box I put there the video clip of the retinal detachment. Notice there the tethered membrane appearance as the patient looks from side to side. Very different than the closed dryer tumbling motion of the vitreous material as we see in the large clip in the middle of the image here. In conclusion, thanks for tuning in for this Sound Bites module going over part two of ocular ultrasound. Now you're ready to use ocular ultrasound as an effective tool to investigate pathology of the eye, opening up that back part of the eye for better examination than we've previously been able to using the traditional fundoscopic exam. You'll quickly make the diagnosis of retinal pathology using bedside ultrasound, and hopefully now be able to discriminate that from vitreous disease, potentially improving the management of patients presenting with ocular complaints to the emergency department. So I hope to see you back in the future as Soundbites continues.